I'm gonna show you how to use AI to make your backgrounds look amazing, and that's great because this is where I am. And the best part is how simple it is to do, and I'm gonna show you how to do it too, but only if you like the video. Now, I'm gonna be honest with you guys for a second. I suck at decorating, design, layout, all that stuff. But now I can take the setup with literally nothing and start to add elements to it piece by piece after filming. I just grabbed this footage of myself talking in front of a very blank setup. Now bring it into your editing software of choice. I'm using Premiere Pro. And what we need to do first is just grab a still frame. And once we've done that, now we can move into Photoshop. You can also use free tools like Dolly 2 or other AI platforms, but Photoshop Beta has a specific tool that's gonna make this so much faster and easier for us. In Photoshop Beta, I'm just gonna take this scene and just select the area that I wanna add something new and click on Generative Fill and type in what you want. That could be a plan, adding or changing furniture, or even putting up an entire wall. I'm sure you've seen this by now, but you get three different options and some of them look really good. Your imagination is really the only thing that limits you here. You can either go completely realistic or way over the top. But until this technology gets perfected, here's a couple of tips to help make this process a little smoother. First, do some trial and error to see if Photoshop has an easier time generating an entire scene or individual components. Telling it to give me an entire living room with a couch and light and a plant in the background actually did a pretty good job. But asking it to put me outside of a castle in the south of France, it doesn't really know what to do with this. It's so case dependent what you wanna create and the material that you give it to begin with, there's a lot of hits and misses. So choosing individual sections and going one item at a time is the way that I found it worked best for my materials. And this also includes adjusting individual pieces of the stuff that you just generated. Like you can see in this example, I like the tree that I ended up with here, but I didn't like the pot. So I just selected that area and told it to give me a new bigger plant pot. Be patient and don't be afraid to generate multiple times because this is new technology and sometimes it gives you weird stuff. Like here, for example, it tried to generate a person on the couch. But now we have a scene that looks pretty good, but now we have to actually integrate it with our footage. So here's what you do. Export that individual image as a JPEG, or you can actually bring in the Photoshop file into Premiere Pro. Set it to merge all the layers if you want one file that's easy to work with. Or if you wanted to create an effect like I did earlier in this video, then keep all of the layers separate. Stack them on top of each other and then make them appear one by one. And then I just threw a simple motion array transition onto all of them. But let's just go back to the simple stuff first. Let's import them all as merged layers. And if you haven't cropped it or changed up your framing at all, you can just place it down right over top and it fits perfectly. But here's where the magic trick comes in. Mask around yourself or anything moving in your scene. Set your mask to inverted and feather it and make sure to avoid any areas that you've added new stuff to. You just need to make sure that you're not gonna cross over anywhere that you're changing your scene. Otherwise, it's gonna be a dead giveaway. But even after all of this, a keen viewer is still gonna notice that something's a little bit off. And that's because everything is too still. And what I mean by that is that even digital video footage shot really well still has this subtle noise or little pixel variations that you might not be able to pick up on consciously, but your brain does. So what's the solution? Blending everything together seamlessly by placing down a subtle noise layer on an adjustment layer over top of everything, even just so that it's barely visible. Or if you wanted to go super pro, you can download some film grade overlays. This is the one that I use here for motion array. And I've left a link to the one that I use in the description down below. This adds a form of motion or movement to sell the idea that it's a video over top of every part of your frame. And I'll ramp it up to the extreme here so you can get an idea of what I'm getting at even with harsh YouTube compression. And finally, the cherry on top is to color grade everything together. But okay, after all of that, you might be thinking, cool, but is there another use case beyond just making my background look cooler? And the answer is yes. And it's actually something I love to do and that's extending your backgrounds. We all dream of getting a super amazing wide angle establishing shot or maybe you just wanna add a subtle zoom into your subject, but you don't have much room before it starts to get really claustrophobic. Or if you wanted to make your aspect ratio super widescreen, but you don't wanna punch in and lose all of the other information around you. All of those situations can utilize the same strategy and this is the solution. Just like before, grab a screenshot and bring it into Photoshop, but this time extend the canvas size so that you have something larger than what you started with. Now using the rectangle tool, select just a little bit less than your whole frame and then right click and select inverse. 
Now you can create a generative fill that naturally works and here's the best part. It doesn't even have to be perfect. Bring it back into Premiere Pro and line it up so that it's the same size as your normal footage. Then just make a mask like before and mask around so that the edges blend naturally between the two. Then making sure that these are both together taking up the full size of your canvas. Add your film grain, set it to the appropriate blending mode and highlight all of this and nest it all together. Now you have a wider shot that you can use as an establishing shot or you can use it to zoom in a longer distance. And if you wanted to know even more ways that you can use AI to spice up your videos, you can take a look at this video I've made over here.